weekly announcements for the radio and television trade. This morning we take a look at the polarisation of our VHF radio transmissions. Circular, slant, mixed, what does it all mean? And we full details of the new ILR service for Newport Gwent, due to open next week. In our television transmitter news, we've the latest on Channel 4 coverage, the usual roundup of special announcements and details of three new relays. In South Wales, Barry Port for HTV Wales and S4C. In the centre of Tunbridge Wells, St Mark's for TVS. And in Hertfordshire, Wellin, to carry land and ITV and Channel 4. But we start with ILR and the 40th station, Gwent Broadcasting, is due to open next Monday. The service is for the Newport area and it's covered by a co-sighted pair of transmitters at Christchurch. VHF is on 104 megahertz in that new upper subband which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Good stereo should be possible in Newport itself and as far as Cumbran and Pontypool. As usual with ILR stations, the VHF transmissions used mixed polarisation. We'll be explaining more about that in a moment. The largely rural areas further north and east will depend mainly on medium wave, which during the day should give good results up to about 10 miles from the transmitter. The MF signals are on 1305 kHz, a wavelength of 230 metres. That's Gwent Broadcasting, now on trade test and due to start programmes next Monday the 13th of June. The 49th ILR service, which is for Norwich and Great Yarmouth, is at the much earlier stage of franchise bidding. Four groups have applied, and there's to be a public meeting on Monday the 20th of June for people to air their views on what they want of an ILR service in their area. The meeting will be on Monday week at St Andrew's Hall in Norwich at 7.30pm, and there are no tickets. Anyone can go along. Now back to mixed polarisation a term we often use without any kind of explanation. You may also have heard us talk about slant and circular polarisation, so what does it all mean? You may know already that radio waves consist of an electrical and a magnetic wave at right angles to each other, and both at right angles to the direction of travel. It's the electric wave that determines the polarisation, and this was chosen to be horizontal back in the 50s when VHF radio began. It's certainly true that horizontal polarisation did give slightly better results on VHF radio than vertical. So it was a good decision at the time. But since then we've seen the arrival of portable and car radios with vertical whip aerials. To give these portable and mobile sets a fighting chance, the IBA planned that from the start its VHF ILR services would use mixed polarisation so that receiving aerials could be mounted horizontally or vertically. How do we go about doing this? Well, we could simply mount the transmitting aerial elements on a 45 degrees slant, putting about half the available power into the horizontal component and half into the vertical. But there is a better way. The polarisation of the wave can be made to rotate. Let's take an electric wave during one cycle. This one's vertically polarised and see how it rises from zero up to maximum, through zero, down to minimum and back to zero. If we take a second wave polarised at right angles and different in phase by 90 degrees, then when one is at zero, the other is at maximum. Add the two together and you can see that the resultant is a wave whose polarisation appears to rotate. There is in fact a signal in all planes of polarisation, but otherwise the signal is the same. This is aptly described as circular polarisation and the receiving aerial can be mounted with the elements at any angle and still pick up the same signal. In practice it's not always possible to maintain the exact phase and amplitude relationships and it's safer to settle for the more general description of mixed polarisation. The important thing is that there are signals in both horizontal and vertical planes although it does mean we can't use different polarisations to protect against co-channel interference as we do with television. Where else can we apply these principles? Direct broadcasting from satellites will certainly use circular polarisation and because these transmissions will always come from the same direction we can take advantage of the two different senses of rotation clockwise and anti-clockwise. Using circularly polarising receiving aerials of the correct sense it will be possible to discriminate against unwanted signals with the opposite sense but perhaps we'll go into all that some other time. Transmitter news now, 
and we're very much into the season of major aerial maintenance with the arrival of better weather and light mornings. Most of this maintenance is done from first light until midday and sometimes all transmissions have to be interrupted. Otherwise there's reduced power for the whole of the five to six week maintenance period. This has been the case at Beacon Hill, Knockmore and Chatton since the beginning of May, but the work should not go on much beyond mid-June. Similarly, Midhurst began half aerial working last Tuesday for aerial maintenance, so it's reduced power and occasional morning interruptions until the end of June. The same applies to Rose Marquis as of yesterday, and the aerial maintenance here will probably go into early July. Again, all channels are affected. Aerial maintenance begins early next week at Sudbury and Red Ruth. That will mean reduced power on both stations until the last week in July. And, for a change, it's Channel 4 installation work at the Rekin, which will require half aerial working from next Monday or Tuesday. This will only last for about two weeks. But it's back to aerial maintenance, and the relay at Les Tuyers on Guernsey is on reduced power for about another two weeks. Again, transmissions are cancelled altogether on some mornings. Now to Channel 4 and the conversion work at existing stations. For almost 120,000 people around the Murray Firth in North Scotland, the Rose Marquis main station is now radiating Channel 4 a few weeks ahead of schedule. Official service is from the 24th of June and the channel is 42. In Yorkshire, the Keithley relay began four channel working last Friday for about 85,000 people. The new channel here is 54. In Northern Ireland, Carnmoney Hill, serving about 25,000 people, is due to have Channel 4 later this week on Channel 50. And on the Wirral, the Stoughton Relay is now expected to bring the new channel to 85,000 Liverpudlians at the end of next week. New relays now, and two stations entered full service last Friday. In South Wales, Barry Port has ITV on Channel 61, with S4C on 54 so it's Group CD aerials vertically polarised. At Ambridge Wells in Kent, the St Mark's relay was switched on ahead of schedule and is now providing a better service for over 2,000 people in central parts of the town, just to the east of the common. TVS is on Channel 60, but Channel 4 will have to wait until about August, when the Pembury station is equipped. In Hertfordshire, the Wellin relay is now due to start transmissions in a week or two. It should extend good signals to just over 2,000 people in Wellin itself and parts of Wellin Garden City. An easterly part of Oaklands and part of Tewinbury will remain unserved. London ITV will be on Channel 43, with Channel 4 available from the outset on 50. Group B aerials will be needed, vertically polarised. That's the Wellin relay due on the air towards the end of next week. That's about it for this week, so here's how you can get in touch with us. Our telephone number is Winchester STD code 0962 822444. We hope you can join us for more engineering announcements next Tuesday at 9.15 on Channel 4 and S4C. In the meantime, have a good week. And from John Lovell and from me, Mari Nicholson, goodbye for now.